Hey everyone, are you interested in what it takes to get a first in maths from a top tier UK university? Well join me because in this video I'll run through the eight key elements that allowed me to get a first in every year of my four year course at Warwick University. So let's get into it. So yeah, point number one is to attend the lectures. So I went to all my lectures religiously and I think a lot of people actually felt they were useless. So they felt like they could get through a lot of the material in their own time at home. They felt like some of the lectures weren't very good. But the problem is that might be the case, but I don't think a lot of these people had the discipline to basically make their way through the material in like a structured way over the course of the term. So my aim was always to turn up to the lectures and just at least take notes. So at least I was doing something to process the information that was being presented to me. Some of the lectures made it Really difficult, some of the lectures were quite interesting, but I just made a point of going to every single one because I thought I'd rather have the information spoon fed to me than me practically seeking it out, which maybe in hindsight wasn't the best approach, but it definitely worked for me. Also, I found that sometimes the lecturer I would deviate from the notes slightly and I got very paranoid about the lecturer maybe setting a question in an exam that wasn't covered in the text and that was given to us, or the lecture notes that were given to us. So I was always a bit paranoid about that. So I was always attending the lectures and listening out for times when the lecturer might be deviating from the course, ensuring that I knew that so that if it came up in the exam, I would be able to answer that question. So point number two was to get hold of the course books. So obviously you can attend the lectures, take notes. There were quite often lecture notes that went with the course, but often the whole course itself was based on a book written by sometimes the lecturer themselves, but often by someone else that was a specialist in the subject. What I found is that if I actually managed to get hold of the course book, I would understand the material so much better because the way that often the book presents the information is just a bit more intuitive and they have to spend a bit more time around explaining the background background and what was behind the course and what like the point in the course was. I remember particularly turning up to one of our courses like metric spaces and thinking why on earth does this even exist? We're talking about open and closed sets and very abstract kind of objects and it wasn't until I got the course book and read the first few pages that I realized uh, it's about generalization. It's about having the broadest kind of set of rules that could apply to a certain area and the broadest set of rules that you could do analysis on. So I think definitely getting the books would really fast track a lot of learning and save a lot of time wondering about what on earth we were doing and why we were doing it. But these books were quite often expensive and quite often difficult to get hold of. Like the library would often kind of not have them in stock. So I would have to kind of beg borrow, not steal, <laughs> but get my hands on the books because I couldn't really afford them. So yeah, get hold of the course books. Element number three was trying really hard on this assignment. So they weren't really worth much in terms of credit, but they really forced me to engage in the material early. And I found them so difficult, to be honest, that I used to spend hours on them. Some people worked in big groups on these. I never did that. I wish I had done in, in hindsight, but yeah, I used to spend ages on the assignments. I'd try really hard. I used to go to tutorials and supervisions and everyone else seemed to be getting like 100% on these assignments. So that kind of ignited the competitive spirit within me. And I definitely tried really hard on the assignments and actually did quite well overall on those. And I feel like that forced me to engage with the tool really early. It made me realize how hard it was. And it also made me search and try to understand anything that I really was kind of clueless about early on, which put me in good stead for the exams, I think. Element number four is that I took additional modules. So what you can do at Warwick, which I think is a great thing about the course, is just take additional modules outside your fixed modules. So I took additional maths and stats modules because that's what I was interested in. But people did like all sorts, like you could take English modules, you could take French modules. I just start to what I knew I was good at and I also wanted to benefit from kind of synergies between them so yeah I definitely just stuck to maths and stats and took those additional modules and what that did was it created a kind of hedge against if one of the exams that was kind of core would go really badly at the end of the year maybe one of my additional modules would go better and overall those modules would get swapped and I would do okay in the end. I'm not sure if that's still a thing actually at Warwick, definitely a, a bonus of the course. So point number five is to take complementary modules. I said you could take modules from all over the place, but I stuck to maths. Within maths, I even stuck to specific areas. So I stuck to analysis and probability, and that was kind of my specialty the whole way through. And yeah, maybe I missed out on some like interesting maths over there, but what you find is that those modules all had a lot of synergies. So you would cover similar topics in similar areas, and it kind of meant that I didn't have to focus on a very broad range of topics. I kind of concentrated and I think that led to me becoming a specialist in certain areas. Lots of my peers just tried to find the easiest modules, you know, wherever they could. But I felt like that lent itself to you being spread too thin. And actually the best thing to do was to find an area that you liked, that you were good at, and then you could just concentrate all your energy there. So I definitely sought to take complementary modules. Didn't just try and find the easiest. 
months. Element number six was creating a study plan. I turned up at work and just assumed that I was just going to get a 2-1 like everyone else. But then I found the course really hard, so I tried really hard <laughs> and ended up getting a first in my first year, which was surprised to me, to be honest. But through that, I kind of centered in on a study plan that I took with me through the whole course. And actually looking back, doing a bit of research on what is a good study plan now, I realized that I kind of by accident stumbled across the thing that everyone recommends, which is reviewing the material regularly and then practicing active recall. Yeah, my study plan basically, I worked out how many exams I had at the end of the year. So if I had six exams, I would try and cover the material once every six days in the lead up. And that forced the kind of periodization. So I was constantly reviewing the material ahead up to the exam. And so I wasn't forgetting it or I wasn't trying to cram it. I was just doing it on a very kind of regular basis. And that was really good because it forced me to spend an equal amount of time on each exam. You could have said, oh, Josh, you should have applied like 80, 20 to this and focused on the core exams. I wanted to diversify because some Sometimes an exam could go really badly. Maybe that's something to do with maths in particular, but even if you knew the course material really well, one of the lecturers might just put in a horrendous exam. You might end up bombing it no matter how well you prepared. So I took a much more diversified approach. I think I kind of paid off because there was one exam which everyone kind of ignored because everyone thought I was not that important, but I decided to do it and that ended up being like one of my best scoring exams, but just because I don't think anyone else really looked at it and I'd done a load of past papers. So I think rotating, make sure you're spending an equal amount of time on each course then recognizing that on the day an exam can go either way it can be as expected or super hard or super easy this kind of strategy protects you against that i even took this method forward to my actuarial exams as well. I would do like three exams at a time for the actuarial and made sure I was covering each of them like on a regular basis. And I was allocating a day to a single topic because I feel like that really allows you to focus because the day is really nicely bookended. <laughs> you know, you've got when you wake up, when you go to sleep and then all the time in the middle. Whereas if you try and do many exams on one day or you try to cover lots of different material on one day, you have to allocate time blocks to them and they inevitably spill over into each other. You get distracted on one. You're perhaps more effective at revising in the morning than the evening or vice versa. So, so just focusing on one course per day, I found just really kind of helped me eliminate all those kind of weird biases and nickels. Element number seven is practicing active recall. So I mentioned it earlier, that was one of the study techniques which I kind of employed naturally, but I've since realized through researching what's the best way to revise that active recall is recommended. I definitely practice that active recall. I essentially, yeah, memorized the whole course and I would do that by practicing over and over again active recall. I had like a whiteboard and some whiteboard pens and I used to just every day just go sit down on the whiteboard and write out the answers to the proofs. So basically created my own flashcards and I'd do that every time. And inevitably I just ended up memorizing all the kind of proofs and theorems and lemmas and definitions that were required in the course. And that gave me a really good foundation to kind of answer the questions that came up in the exam, which were slightly off course or like you couldn't really revise for them. You just had to know the material and you had to kind of apply it to a new situation. In hindsight, I think I'd sometimes get lazy and just passively copy things out. And when I was doing my actuary exams, I really did that a lot. So in hindsight, I feel like I could have saved a lot of time by just going straight to active recall and just forcing myself to learn. It's the harder thing to do, but it's the more effective thing to do and ultimately would have saved me time. So I think I wasted a lot of time just passively copying things out. <laughs> and definitely in hindsight, active recall is the way. I would just do like past papers. I would even apply 80-20 now to past papers and say what the most common questions that come up, make sure I can absolutely nail those and then work on the fringe. You can be a lot smarter about it, I think, but obviously I didn't have that knowledge then. And then element number eight is nail your project. So in the fourth year, at Warwick University, you get given a project and that actually, or you can select a supervisor and do your own project. I, I did the latter and it's worth quite a lot of your marks for the year. So I really focused on this. I spent a lot of time and effort on this. I realized the way Warwick works is uh, your first year is worth like 10% of your overall degree, then your second year is worth 20% and then your third year is worth 30% and then the balance is my fourth year. I knew that I'd already got a really good degree and so I decided to focus on my project because that had the potential to ruin everything if I really bombed it. I spent a lot of time in my project. I actually really enjoyed it. I chose a supervisor I liked and the area that I was interested in. And yeah, definitely spent a disproportionate amount of time there, but it really paid off. I ended up getting 84%, I think, on my project, where a first would be 70%. So that really bumped up my grade at the end of the year, especially when the exams are getting really difficult by that point. So yeah, 
I recommend really focusing on your project. My wife as well, who uh, actually, she got a first from Cambridge in natural sciences. She did the same sort of thing. We talk about it all the time, where it's how important the project is at the end of the year, and you can really differentiate yourself there. I think she ended up winning a prize for it. So yeah, that's it. They're my eight elements to getting a first at Warwick University in maths. Be really interested in your thoughts on this. And if you want to check out anything else from me, check out this video.